Hello everyone, my name is Wout Berlens and I'll be talking about the improved grip analysis of oil and vinegar and rainbow. So I'll start by explaining what oil and vinegar and rainbow are. They are multivariate signature algorithms and oil and vinegar was invented in 1997 by Patarin and then in the following years there was some cryptanalysis but um, after a couple of years the, the ideas dried up and there have not really been uh, any improvements since then. And oil and vinegar is, has quite good signature size. For example, you could have 90 byte uh, signatures at NIST security level 1. Uh, but the public keys are quite large, right? for example, 240 kilobytes. And then there was uh, a new signature scheme invented in 2005 by Ding and Schmidt, and this was based on oil and vinegar scheme. In the sense that it's basically multiple layers of oil and vinegar uh, combined. Um, this makes the scheme a little bit more complicated, so there has been more crypt analysis. And um, yeah, now Rainbow is one of the finalists in the NIST standardization competition. And uh, it's a little bit more efficient than oil and vinegar. For example, you could have 70 byte signatures instead of 90 bytes. And also the public keys are a little bit smaller, but still uh, quite big. And so in this talk, I'll first tell you how oil and vinegar and Rainbow work. And then I'll tell you about new uh, improved key recovery attacks on these signature schemes. Okay, so I said oil and vinegar and rainbow are multivariate signature schemes. And this means that they're based on a multivariate quadratic map. And a multivariate quadratic map is just a sequence of homogeneous quadratic polynomials in a number of variables. So this gives you uh, a map from uh, fq to the n to fq to the m. And um, we use these maps because we believe they are one way. Uh, because this uh, this problem, which we call the MQ problem, is, is believed to be hard. Uh, and it says that if you, I give you a multivariate quadratic map P and a target T in, in, your, in the output space, FQ to the M, then finding a pre-image S such that P of S is equal to T is a hard problem. And uh, we know that this problem is NP hard. And we also think that it's exponentially hard, even on average, for quantum computers. So it's a good problem to base uh, post-quantum cryptography on. And our signature schemes are based on trapdoor multivariate maps. Uh, this means that P looks random, so if you don't know any better, then computing pre-images is hard, because we believe the MQ problem is hard for random uh, polynomial maps. But um, actually there is some secret information, and if you know the secret information, then uh, computing pre-images is actually easy. And once you have such trapdoor functions, then you can build uh, signature schemes with the full domain hash uh, approach. This is also what RZ signatures use. And so here the public key is just a description of your of your, of your trapdoor function P. The secret key is your trapdoor information. And then to create a signature for a message M, you first hash the message into your output space, and then you produce a pre-image for this hash. So your signature will just be uh, an input S, such that P of S is equal to the hash of your message. Okay, so to understand oil and vinegar and rainbow, you just need to understand how these uh, trapdoors work. But before I explain that, I have to introduce some notation. So we say that if P is a multivariate quadratic map, then its polar form is uh, this function P prime of two variables. And it's just divide, defined as P of X plus Y minus P of X minus P of Y. Uh, plus p of zero, but uh, here the p is homogeneous, so you can forget about p of zero. And then it's easy to see that p of x and y is symmetric and uh, bilinear. So this is going to be useful. And now we can explain how the oil and vinegar trapdoor works. So the trapdoor structure is actually very simple. It's just a linear subspace of, of your input space of dimension m where m is the dimension of the output space, such that uh, your map p vanishes on the space O. So this means for every vector O in the space O, p of O is equal to zero. Uh, and yeah, if you if you know such a space, then it turns out that it's easy to compute p images. How do you do that? Well, um, the first step is to just pick a random input. This is called the vinegar vector. And then, um, you solve for a vector O in your oil space 
such that P of V plus O is equal to your target. And this is easy because if you use our, our definition of the polar form, you can rewrite P of V plus O as just P of V plus P of O plus the polar form of V and O. But uh, like we know, P of O is zero because P vanishes on the space O. So what's left is just uh, P of V, that's some fixed value because it shows a fixed value for V, and then something that's linear in O. So actually to solve this for O is just a system of M linear equations in M variables. So you can just uh, find a solution with Gaussian elimination. Uh, and if it turns out that this system does not have any solutions, which is uh, unlikely, but it happens here prob probability roughly one over Q, then you can just pick a different vinegar vector and, and try again. Right? So you just do this until you find a solution. And then once you have a solution, you just output uh, V plus O. Okay, so that's how the Euler vinegar trap door works. It's very simple. I can explain it on one slide. Um, and if you turn it into a signature scheme, then you can prove that the signature scheme is secure uh, based on two assumptions. The first assumption is this MQ problem that I mentioned before. And this seems uh, like a very plausible assumption. And the second assumption is um, that if you generate uh, your, your function P that vanishes on some random uh, space O, then what you get is indistinguishable from a uniformly random map P. And yeah, this is a fun, this is an assumption uh, that has been analyzed since the invention of the oil and vinegar scheme, but um, yeah, it's of course much more ad hoc than our first assumption, and it's this assumption that we're going to try to attack in this uh, in this paper in this work. But before we try to break this assumption, I'm first going to explain how the rainbow trapdoor works. So. With rainbow, the trapdoor structure is a little bit more complicated. So instead of just one um, one space O, we now have a chain of uh, subspaces from O1 up to OK, where K is some, some integer. And there's also a chain of uh, subspaces of the output space. And then our trapdoor function P is chosen in such a way that it uh, maps O1 into W1, O2 into W2, and so on. So, so yeah, this property is just uh, a generalization of the oil and vinegar uh, trapdoor, because if you put k equals one, then there's just one uh, one o, and p sends o into w one, but w one is just uh, the trivial uh, space with only the zero vector. So this is exactly the scenario that we were in. Uh, and with U of V, so just one space and P vanishes on that space. Uh, but actually, there's a, a, an additional property that we uh, want, and it has to do with this uh, polar uh, form P, P prime that we defined earlier. And uh, we want that P prime for any vector X, if you plug in this X, then you get a map from O2 into W1, uh, from O3 into W2, and so on. So uh, o i gets sent into w i minus one, and yeah, this is an additional property that we need in order to make the the trapdoor work. So it turns out that if you know this trapdoor structure, then you can efficiently find p images for your map p. And um, I'm just going to explain how to do that in the case that k equals two, uh, because this is simpler, but also because um, this is what the the parameters for the NIST submission uh, use. So in case k equals 2, you just have two uh, O spaces, so 1 and O2, and there's one W space. And uh, we know that our map P sends O1 into W, P vanishes on O2, and for every vector x, uh, we know that this differential maps O2 into W. Right? And if you know all, this, uh, all these things, then it's easy to, to find a pre-image. So how do you do this? Well, as in the UV case, again, you start by just picking a random V. And then uh, we're going to solve for uh, an O vector in O1. Uh, but this time, we're not going to try to get a solution immediately. 
we're just going to uh, find a solution that is correct up to a vector in this space w. And again, using this uh, differential, this comes down to solving a system of linear equations. And then once you have uh, this solution v plus o1 that is correct up to w, we're going to solve for a vector o2 in the space o2 that is uh, now an exact solution. And again, we can just write this out. You get um, something p of v plus o1, which is fixed, uh, minus t. And this is something in w, because that's what we guaranteed in the first, uh, the first step. Then we have this p of o2, which vanishes, because p vanishes on o2. And then we have this, uh, this linear thing. So again, this is just uh, a linear equation in, uh, in W. And we have uh, the dimension of W decrease of freedom, because uh, the dimension of O2 is the same as the dimension of W. So with large probability, this will have a solution. And we can, can just find it with Gaussian elimination. All right, so this is rainbow with two layers, and there's two steps. Of course, if you had a longer chain, then you need more steps to, to find a solution. Okay, so at this point I've explained how oil and vinegar and rainbow uh, work. Now we'll move on to attacks. So first I'll explain um, the existing attacks against oil and vinegar. Then I'll explain a new attack against oil and vinegar. And then finally I'll uh, very bri briefly summarize uh, a new attack against rainbow and, and give uh, the results of how efficient this new attack is. Okay, so first the existing attacks against oil and vinegar. So the first attack was discovered uh, a year after oil and vinegar was, was proposed, and this attack was discovered by Kipnis and Shamir, and it broke oil and vinegar in polynomial time, uh, but only in this case where n, the number of variables, is two times the number of, uh, of equations. And um, already in this paper, they said that if you increase n, beyond 2 times m, then the scheme could still be secure. Uh, and then uh, a year later, this attack was generalized to the n is larger than 2m case. But now the attack um, has a complexity which is q to the n minus 2m times something uh, polynomial. Right? So the attack really becomes um, inefficient very quickly once n starts to grow beyond uh, 2m. And this is uh, today, before this new attack, uh, was still the, the best attack. Uh, so how does this uh, Kipnis Shamir attack work? Well, the attack is based on this observation. So um, remember this, this polar form, uh, this, this uh, gave us um, a lot of symmetric bilinear maps. So of course, we can represent these with, uh, with a symmetric matrix. So for each component of our polar form, we get the matrix um, mi, such that uh, pi of x comma y is equal to x transpose times mi times y. And the observation is that if our map p vanishes on some uh, space O, then this matrix mi sends O into its own uh, complement. So uh, mi O is orthogonal to, to O. And uh, yeah, the proof is very easy. So um, take a vector O1 in O, and then we want to prove that Mi times O1 is orthogonal to O. So as we prove this, you take a vector O2 in O, and then uh, yeah, we need to prove that this thing is zero. But uh, yeah, by definition of Mi, this is just this uh, polar form applied to O2 and O1. But yeah, if you apply the definition of the polar form, this is just this. And we know that P vanishes on the space O, and O1 and O2 are in O. So PI vanishes on O1, O2, and also O1 plus O2. So this is just uh, zero. Right, so uh, the proof is very simple, but still this is a very um, powerful observation that will allow us to, to attack. Okay, so how does this lead to an attack? Uh, well, we first look at the case where n is equal to 2 times m, uh, because in this case, uh, the dimension of O, uh, which is m, is equal to the dimension of O perp, because the dimension of O perp is n 
minus m. So 2, 2 m minus m is m. So these spaces have the same dimension. So this means that if you have two of these matrix, matrices, m1, m2, and they are invertible, then like we know m1 times O sits inside uh, O perp. This was the lemma. But if they have the same dimension, then they must be equal. Right? And the same thing for M2. M2 times O sits inside of O perp, but they have the same dimension, so they're equal. And right, this means that O is an invariant subspace of M2 inverse times M1. And uh, there's a polynomial time algorithm to find the invariant subspaces of, uh, of a matrix. And M1 and M2 are public, so you can just compute, compute this invariant subspace and then you have your, your secret key O. Right, so the attack is uh, is fairly simple once you have this uh, this option. Okay, so the case where n equals two m is easy, and now we want to generalize this to to larger n. Um, and yeah, the problem now is that m one times o is uh, no longer equal to m two of o because our our lemma just says that they're both subspaces of o perp, but now o perp is is large enough that they don't have to be equal anymore. Right? But still, since they're both subspaces of O perp, which is not too big, um, M1 O and M2 O are forced to have a large uh, intersection, namely uh, an intersection of dimension at least uh, 3M minus N. And because of this, um, it turns out that this matrix M1 inverse times M2 has eigenvectors in O with a reasonably large probability, namely Q to the 2M minus N. And yeah, once you know this, uh, you can you can do the following attack. So you just look at matrices uh, of of this form. You compute their eigenvectors, and then uh, you check if their eigenvectors are in O. And you can do this by just evaluating p on these eigenvectors, because you know uh, p vanishes on O. So if the vector is in, if your eigenvector is in O, then and p of that eigenvector will be zero. Uh, yeah, so for every for every matrix that you try, there's this probability that you find uh, an eigenvector in O. So just repeat this until you have a basis for O. Uh, and on average, you have to try Q to the n minus 2 m uh, matrices. So the complexity of the attack is Q to the n minus 2 m times uh, some polynomial uh, work factor. Okay, so that's the state of the art of the attacks against oil and vinegar. And uh, now I'll explain the, the new attack. Okay, so the new attack still uses this picture from the Kipnis Shamir uh, attack. And now the idea is that uh, we're going to fix some k and we're going to look for a vector x in an intersection of k of these uh, spaces, so m1o up to mko. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to uh, build a system of equations, and then we're just going to use uh, a generic algorithm to find a solution of this system of equations. And um, for example, if we if we look at k equals two, so we're looking at a vector in the intersection of two of these spaces, then we have this system of equations, where uh, like this first set of equations uh, is because like if x is in m1 times o then m1 inverse times x sits in O, and you know p vanishes on O, so p of this uh, is equal to zero. And the same thing for p of m2 inverse times x. And yeah, if m1 inverse times x and m2 inverse times x sit in O, then also their sum sits in O, so this gives you this extra set of, of equations. And uh, yeah, in general, for general k, we will have k plus one choose two m equations, right? Because every uh, p uh, gives you m equations over your over your field, and uh, yeah, the number of variables I uh, would think it's n because x lives in f q to the m uh, f q to the n. But actually, um, if you know this intersection has dimension d, then you can just add d random linear equations. To eliminate some variables, and you know that with high probability you will still uh, have a solution, right? So you can use 
is to reduce the number of variables, um, which makes the attack more efficient. Right. But um, yeah, the attack will only work if this intersection is uh, non-trivial, of course. And yeah, if you do the, the analysis, then it turns out that this uh, intersection is guaranteed to be non-trivial if, uh, if this holds. So it really depends on this ratio of n over m. And yeah, the, the smaller this ratio is, is, the closer to 2 it is, the, the larger k uh, can be. And if k is larger, then we get more equations in the same number of variables. So this will make uh, solving the system uh, much easier. Right? So this, this means that the closer n over m is equal to 2, the more efficient uh, the attack will be. OK, so uh, let's, let's apply this uh, attack to a proposed parameter set that was uh, in the literature. So um, like this one. Uh, where q is 2 to 8, you have 104 variables and 44 uh, equations. So in this case, n over m is 2.36, which means that we can uh, choose k equals 3 and still expect uh, your intersection to be non-zero. And if we do the attack with k equals 3, then uh, our system has 258 equations in uh, 89 variables. And it turns out that you can solve this with just generic algorithms uh, with a complexity of 2 to the 95 multiplications. And yeah, this is much better than the, the expected strength of this parameter set because um, yeah, this parameter set was chosen to have uh, 128 bits of security. OK, so now we're done with UOV and we'll move on to Rainbow. Yeah, OK. so. And uh, yeah, so remember with Rainbow, we have this more complicated uh, trapdoor structure. And again, we're going to focus on the case where k equals 2. So we got two uh, O spaces and one W space. And we're going to focus on, on this property that says that for whatever value x you plug into this uh, differential, you get a map from O2 to W, because this will allow us to find uh, find vectors in O2. So we're going to look at um, these matrices. So we got n matrices, uh, L1, L2, Ln. And each matrix has uh, n rows and n columns, because every row is an evaluation of our uh, differential. And yeah, the first slot is uh, Ej, where j is the number of your row. And the second slot is uh, Ei, where i is this uh, index of the matrix. And uh, yeah, we look at these matrices because uh, it turns out that if y is a vector in O2, then the rank of this uh, linear combination given by y uh, is, is very low. It's uh, at most a dimension of w. And uh, yeah, why is this? It's very uh, simple because this, this differential is linear, so these yi just go inside differential. So you just have uh, this matrix where every row is uh, is now in uh, evaluation of a differential like this. But yeah, this property of the public key says that for any uh, value x, so in particular for E1 up to En, if the second vector is something in O2, then it will spit out something in W. Right? So every row of this matrix is a vector in W, and therefore the rank of this matrix is at most the dimension of, of W. Right, so we're now in this uh, situation where these matrices are public, and uh, we know that there's some linear combination of them that has an exceptionally low rank. Uh, so all we need to do is find this, uh, this linear combination, uh, and once we find one of those linear combinations, then this will give us uh, this vector y, which sits in O2. Right? And so this problem where you're given a number of matrices and you have to look for a linear combination of them with low rank is called the min rank problem. And this is a, a well-known problem in multivariate quadratic cryptography, but also in code-based cryptography. And so, yeah, you can just use algorithms that have been developed to solve this problem to find uh, those linear combinations, which gives you vectors in O2. And yeah, once you know O2, 
uh, it's it automatically gives you W and then you can find O1. So then everything, uh, yeah, everything is is uh, quite easy. So you can just recover the entire secret key, and then yeah, you can forge signatures, of course. But yeah, in our case, we don't want to use a generic min rank algorithm because uh, we have more information about this this linear combination, right? Because this uh, linear combination corresponds to a vector in L2, and we know that P uh, will vanish on this on this vector. Uh, right, so it turns out we can uh, tweak the existing min rank algorithms a little bit to make use of this extra information, and this makes the attack uh, more efficient. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to explain in this video how that works. If you're interested in that, you should uh, look at the paper. Okay, so I mentioned in the beginning that Rainbow was one of the finalists in the NIST competition. So let's now have a look at the parameters that were submitted uh, to this competition. So this first um, column of the table gives you the complexity of this intersection attack that I talked about in the context of UOV, but also can be made to work against Rainbow. And the second column is this new min rank attack that I just talked about now. And yeah, you can see that for all the parameters, uh, either this intersection attack is uh, the most efficient or this new min rank attack is the most efficient. And so, yeah, for, for every parameter, uh, we improve on the best known attacks uh, by quite a bit. For example, for the, the security level one parameter uh, submitted for the finals, we improved the complexity of the best known attack by 20 bits. And for higher security levels, uh, it's, it's even 40 bits or, or more. So, yeah, we give quite a substantial uh, improvement in the complexity of the attacks. Okay, so we made it to the conclusion. So I talked about oil and vinegar, which was this elegant signature scheme that's uh, based on this problem where I give you a public key that vanishes on some secret subspace, and the problem is to, to find this secret subspace. And um, I gave a new attack that's uh, based on this idea of trying to find a vector in some intersection. And this new attack um, is more efficient than the previously known attacks for some uh, parameters. And then uh, we also talked about Rainbow, which is uh, one of the finalists for the NIST post-quantum uh, cryptography project. And I uh, also gave a new key recovery attack against Rainbow that was based on this, uh, this min rank problem. And yeah, the complexity of the new attack um, is 20 bits more uh, efficient than the best known attacks for uh, security level one, and even even more for higher security levels. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much.